Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. There's an, another dimension of this uh, <clears throat> strategic crisis in the uh, Afghan adventure is it's not just the Pakistani government officially closing the border crossing at the Khyber Pass and holding back 250 trucks per day of uh, supplies, right? That's the gasoline, the food, medical supplies, uh, ammunition, stuff like this, bulk uh, cargoes. You've also got various kinds of mujahideen, right, guerrilla fighters inside uh, Pakistan that are making actual uh, armed, violent attacks on these uh, convoys and trucks. Uh, and there's now a second one of those, right? 27 uh, tanker trucks have been destroyed by such an attack. So all of that uh, going on. Generally speaking, um, Middle East drifting towards uh, some form of conflict. And I think that's, uh, to stress again, Ahmadinejad's speech at the United Nations pointing to 9-11 once again, I think has much to do with the fact that he feels that he is, uh, that Iran is uh, in danger of becoming the target, the the implied uh, perpetrator of a new 9-11 provocation coming from the U.S. intelligence community and or, and or a new Gulf of Tonkin Incident. All of this amply discussed in those essays that I posted in uh, in July and August. So uh, there it is, and it'll be interesting to follow up on Ahmadinejad's uh, uh, raising the issue of an international uh, investigative effort into into 9/11, be that in the United Nations or in other other forms. So um, let's now just. Uh, in terms of, of domestic politics, the money bags behind the astroturfed Tea Party, uh, we've called them the Cokehead because of the prevalence of the Koch brothers, the two Koch brothers of Koch Industries, Koch Industries. Um, they fund uh, with $40 million, apparently, the Americans for Prosperity. But don't forget Rupert Murdoch, the boss of Fox News giving $1 million to the Republican Governors Association. And don't forget Steve Forbes, the geek from the Republican uh, presidential contest of the 1980s. He was always running in the 1990s and never getting anywhere and then weeping because they didn't understand his uh, free market conservative solutions. He's now out there for the club of growth, so he's obviously coughing up some, some money. So you get the idea. The super rich uh, and the uh, the lunatic fringe, in some ways, of the ruling class, the more the extreme right wing of the Rupert Murdoch, George Shultz right wing already of the uh, U.S. Uh, Anglo-American ruling class uh, coming to the fore. Um, you've also got these, the latest is Paladino, right? Paladino threatening, I guess, to take out. Uh, the journalist from the New York Post, Rupert Murdoch's journalist, and Paladino threatens to uh, to, um, to to rub him out. Uh, think back to the 1920s. Uh, one of the things that the National Socialists ran into was that as they brought forward their legions, right, their gutter snipes, that a lot of these people were thugs, rowdies, goons drawn from the criminal classes or from the borderline of the criminal classes, and I think this is what we're we're seeing now. The thing to remember, though, is that when populations become desperate enough, this no longer matters, that people don't care about petty bourgeois respectability once they have passed a certain level of economic desperation. And again, let me mention, this broadcast goes on on the 2nd of October. Probably worth taking a look at that AFL-CIO rally, not to join in calls to ele- to reelect uh, Democrats or Obama, but maybe to inject some kind of programmatic content into it beyond what the Trumpka leadership wants to put in there. But now let's let's conclude on a positive note, at least positive in some ways. Amtrak has announced uh, in uh, Philadelphia this past week their 30-year uh, development plan for the Northeast Corridor from Boston to Washington, D.C. And the plan is to completely rebuild these tracks. Now, that's long overdue. The the rail line between Boston and New York in particular 
is more than 150 years old. And one of the reasons the train takes so long between New York and Boston is that it's still in the roadbed that was designed by engineers a century and a half ago and more. It takes you back to the 1840s and the 1850s. Uh, This is too old. $120 billion will rebuild the tracks from Boston to Washington, D.C., and make them capable of fast rail. Now, I would think for a few billion more, you could also build them so that they would be simultaneously maglev capable, and I think that's important. What they're talking about is a 220-mile-an-hour train. Now, 220 miles an hour, you've already got that between Canton and Wuhan, between Guangzhou and, and Wuhan, China. You've already got 220 miles an hour. But this is, of course, uh, progress. The only thing we would say is do it on a much shorter timetable. Um, the plan uh, revealed this week is that it would be uh, a way to take the ridership of Amtrak in this northeast corridor area from 12 million to 34 million riders. You'd be basically tripling it. Uh, it would cost $120 billion. Now, this is a small slice of the so-called stimulus, which was wasted in large degree on, uh, well, certainly it's a small slice of the bailout that was completely wasted. All of that TARP money uh, essentially has been completely wasted. We're now told that AIG is about to pay back what they borrowed under the, uh, under the TARP. Uh, well, if they're paying back $150 billion, if that's what they're doing, uh, as they do, why not just plow that $150 billion into the Amtrak Northeast Corridor and similar projects? It would create 44,000 construction jobs. And these, these, under the Davis-Bacon Act, would be union wages. These would be real jobs, 44,000 for the next uh, 30 years, and 120,000 permanent jobs running the railroad. Now, the problem with this is that the Amtrak yearly budget is between 3 and $4 billion. So the Amtrak yearly budget is about the same size as the $4 billion that would have to be put into the Northeast Corridor over a period of 30 years to get to this. And again, the Europeans have it. The Japanese have their Shinkansen bullet trains. The Chinese, what's wrong with the U.S.? Uh, it's time to cut through the bureaucratic red tape. It's time to cut through the free market lunacy. The austerity ghouls have got to be driven back into their, into their uh, lairs. Uh, start building this thing simultaneously. Spend $120 billion right away in the Northeast Corridor. And again, what do you get? A permanent increase in your capital stock with these fast rail, and a tremendous increase in the productivity of labor. Think about the millions and billions of lost man hours of people that are uh, spending their time in a slow train from Boston to New York, or uh, the alternative is they're spending their time going to the airport and overloading that system. Uh, We want to give due uh, credit here to Governor Rendell of um, Pennsylvania. Now, he has ulterior motives because I think he's, he's in cahoots with a Wall Street group that wants to get a piece of this pie. Nevertheless, he does say that anything, he says, no one should take a plane for a trip shorter than 500 miles, saying that if the U.S. could build this system, it would be comparable to service, which already links many countries in Europe. So what's the problem? Now, naturally, the reactionaries will scream, no, big government, government spending. Sorry, boys. The important thing with this is uh, to get it done. If the private sector had done it, that would have been great. That's a wonderful way to do it. But since the private sector has struck out, it's got to be built. And that leaves this public initiative, which, of course, is then working through private contractors who will do the building. So... Build it and build it now and build it simultaneously and build it in many other areas, right? Don't forget the San Francisco to Los Angeles, San Diego, and the whole Chicago complex and so on and so on in all the main areas. So we will see you next week here on World Crisis Radio.